That best buy date on your canned soup? It's a comfortable lie from a world that's already dead. You're hoarding food that will kill you faster than the apocalypse outside. The air in your chip bag. The oils in your healthy brown rice. The tiny dent in your can of beans. These are not imperfections. They are fuses. Ticking time bombs of botulism and rot. The supermarket is a museum of decay, and your pantry is its sister exhibit. But what if I told you the secret to survival isn't in a bunker full of MREs? It's in the common, boring things you ignore every day. We are not hoping. We are building an immortal pantry, a food supply that will outlast you, using nothing but physics and a deep disrespect for entropy. Before you stockpile a single grain, you must understand the trinity of decay. These are your true enemies. Oxygen, moisture, and life. Oxygen is the great oxidizer. It makes things rancid. It turns oils into poison and vitamins into dust. Moisture is the elixir of life, and that's the problem. It's the medium, the transportation system for all the things that want to eat your food before you do. And life means the microorganisms, the bacteria, the yeasts, the molds, all waiting for a single drop of water, a single breath of air, to begin their feast. Our entire strategy, our entire pantry is built on one principle, denying these three enemies. We are creating deserts, we are creating vacuums, we are creating environments so hostile that life itself gives up. Let's start with the things that wage this war effortlessly. Nature's perfect soldiers. The immortals, nature's perfect preservatives. First, the holy trinity of screw you entropy. We begin with salt, sodium chloride. This isn't just a flavor enhancer for your scavenged rat stew, it's a microbial executioner. Salt is a desiccant. It wages war through osmotic pressure. It literally rips the water molecules out of the cell walls of bacteria, leaving them as tiny mummified husks. It creates a chemical wasteland where life cannot exist. But be warned, not all salt is created equal. That fancy pink Himalayan salt? It's fine. But that common iodized table salt? The iodine compounds can, over decades, degrade the flavor and potentially react with your containers. You want pure, non-iodized sodium chloride. Canning salt, kosher salt, or bulk pool salt. Store it in anything airtight, Keep it dry, and it will outlast civilizations. Next is sugar. Pure white death to microbes. Like salt, sugar is hygroscopic. It binds water molecules with a miser's grip. It doesn't just absorb moisture, it locks it down. This creates an environment with such low water activity that bacteria simply cannot function. They can't metabolize, they can't reproduce, they just stop. Yes, it might clump into a concrete brick that could stop a bullet. That's not decay. That's just the sugar absorbing ambient humidity and bonding to itself. It's a physical change, not a chemical one. It's still a bulletproof brick of pure calories. Smash it with a hammer. Dissolve it in water. It's still sugar. It still works. And then there is honey. Nature's golden middle finger to decay. This isn't just sugar water. It's a complex chemical weapon. Honey has an incredibly low water content, usually around 17% which is far too low for yeasts or bacteria to gain a foothold, but its real magic is its pH. Honey is an acid with a pH between 3 and 4.5, which is hostile territory for microbes. And as a final defense, bees add an enzyme, glucose oxidase, which creates hydrogen peroxide, a natural antibiotic, when the honey is exposed to moisture. Archaeologists found 3,000-year-old honey in Egyptian tombs. It was still perfectly edible. The pharaohs are dust, but their breakfast condiment is eternal. But man cannot live on condiments alone. You need calories. You need bulk. And that's where the Great Carbohydrate Fortress comes in. The Calorie Fortress. Carbohydrates that defy time. Let's talk about carbohydrate immortality, and this is critical. You must get white rice, not brown rice. That healthy hippie garbage will be your downfall. Brown rice contains oils in its bran and germ. Oils go rancid. Rancidity is oxidation, and it will poison your food supply. White rice has had its soul, its bran, and its oils stripped away, and that is precisely why it is immortal. It is a pure, stable starch. 
This is your number one priority. Scavenge it from Asian markets, from bulk suppliers. The whiter and more processed, the better. But storage is everything. You need to create a tomb. The professionals use Mylar bags, those shiny metallic pouches that look like something from a space mission. Mylar is brilliant because it's non-porous. It blocks light completely, and unlike plastic, it has an incredibly low oxygen and moisture transmission rate. You put the rice in, you add oxygen absorbers, those little packets that chemically eat the air, and you heat seal it shut. Those absorbers contain iron powder. The iron reacts with the oxygen in the bag, forming iron oxide rust. It literally vacuums the O2 out of the air, leaving a nitrogen-rich environment where insects cannot live and oxidation cannot happen. Then, you place that sealed bag inside a sealed five-gallon bucket for physical protection. You have just created an environment with no light, no moisture, and no oxygen. That rice will be perfectly edible in 30 years. Your second pillar is pasta. Dried pasta. Spaghetti, macaroni, any of those weird shapes. It's just processed durum wheat. Flour and water pounded into submission and dried to the consistency of stone. It's a desert for microorganisms. They arrive, find nothing to drink, and die of thirst. The same storage protocol applies. Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers. 20 years from now, when you're boiling this pasta over a fire made from a priceless antique chair, it will taste exactly like it did before the collapse, which is to say, like nothing. But it's nothing that will keep you alive. Let's add a third pillar, dried corn. Not the sweet corn in a can, I'm talking about field corn, also known as dent corn, or the even harder, flint corn. This is the stuff used for animal feed, for cornmeal, for grits. It's harvested when it's rock hard and mature with a moisture content of 15% or less. It's a dense, starchy, caloric rock. Stored in the same mylar and bucket system, it's indestructible. Even unpopped popcorn kernels, which are a type of flint corn, are famously stable because their entire purpose is to hold a tiny, precise amount of moisture inside a rock-hard shell. Stored dry, they last decades. Calories are fuel, but your body is a machine that needs more. It needs protein, and that's a much harder challenge. The Protein Bunker. Meat and legumes in stasis. Protein is the challenge. It wants to decay, but we have solutions. First, canned meats. Chicken, beef, tuna, spam, that mystery meat that might have been an animal once. The canning process is a medieval but effective form of mummification. The food is high heat sterilized, killing every living thing inside, and then sealed in an anaerobic, oxygen-free environment. No oxygen means no spoilage. It is protein suspended in time. But you must become a can archaeologist. Your eyes are your first line of defense. Look for cans without dents, especially on the seams. A dent can break the microscopic integrity of the inner lining. No rust. And absolutely no bulges. A swollen can means Clostridium botulinum is having a party inside. This is the bacterium that creates botulism. It is an anaerobe, meaning it thrives in the oxygen-free environment of a can. As it metabolizes the food, it releases gas, swelling the can. More importantly, it releases botulinum toxin, the single most potent neurotoxin known to science. A microscopic amount can kill you. That is not a food can, it's a booby trap. Your nose is your second defense. When you open it, that whoosh of air should be inward, not outward. If it hisses at you or smells even slightly off, it is poison. Your can opener isn't just a tool. It's the key to a protein time capsule. Your other protein source is the prepper's best friend, dried beans. Kidney beans, black beans, pinto beans, these are tiny, rock-hard, nutritional powerhouses. They look like rocks and, let's be honest, they taste about the same but they are protein and fiber that demand nothing but a dry place to sleep. Their magic is their low moisture content. They are in a state of suspended animation. The same storage protocol we always use. Mylar bags, oxygen absorbers, sealed containers. You are creating a tomb so perfect that time itself gets confused and leaves them alone. 30 years from now, they will still cook, though they may need more water and time. They will be a gritty, bland, beautiful meal. 
But what about the vitamins? What about the one thing that prevents your body from literally falling apart? Scurvy is a slow, agonizing way to go. The Vitamin Vault, armored fruits and vegetables. This is for when your body is threatening to develop scurvy and your teeth are feeling loose. Canned fruits and vegetables. These are your vitamins in armor. Peaches, corn, green beans, tomatoes that have only a distant ancestral memory of what sunlight felt like. The same canning science that preserves meat works here. High heat sterilization, an airtight seal, an environment more hostile than a tax audit. Those Best Buy dates? They are gentle suggestions from a world that had the luxury of choice. Ignore them. Trust the science. Trust the can. Yes, the texture will be mush. The color will be questionable. The vitamins, especially the water-soluble ones like vitamin C and B vitamins, will degrade over time. Heat and time are their enemies. A can of green beans from 10 years ago will have significantly less vitamin C than a new one. But degraded is not zero. Your body does not care if the peaches have the consistency of baby food. It cares about not falling apart at the cellular level. This is not about fine dining. It is about cellular integrity. Stockpile these not for calories, but for survival. Okay, we have the essentials. But survival isn't just about not dying. It's about maintaining sanity. Let's look at the foods that make the apocalypse almost bearable. The Apocalypse Pantry. Beyond the basics. Let's start your new morning with rolled oats. The breakfast of the apocalypse. We're talking old-fashioned oatmeal. The thick, hearty varieties that could double as construction adhesive. Not the instant packets with sugar and fake fruit. Those will expire. You want pure, rolled oats. They are just grass seeds, flattened and dried. Low moisture, low oil, and stubborn. Store them like rice and they provide sustained energy and, more importantly, the illusion of a civilized breakfast. For when you miss the concept of dairy, there is powdered milk. Dairy's ghost. Let's be clear, this is not milk. It is the memory of milk preserved in powdered form. Scavenge it from restaurant supplies or camping stores. Look for whole milk powder if you can. The fat content means more calories, but be paranoid about moisture. Powdered milk and humidity are mortal enemies. One drop of water and your powder becomes a brick. Keep it drier than your sense of humor. It won't taste like milk. It will taste like disappointment with a side of calcium. But your bones will thank you. Now for something the original article missed. Fat. Your body needs fat for long-term energy and brain function. And most fats go rancid. Except for two. Ghee, which is clarified butter, has had all the milk solids and water removed. It is pure, stable butter fat. Stored in a sealed jar, it can last for years, even decades. The same goes for rendered lard. Our ancestors knew this. Pure animal fat, rendered and sealed, is shelf stable. And what about morale? This is where the true immortals shine. Instant coffee crystals. Pure, freeze-dried coffee is just dehydrated brew. With no moisture, it cannot rot. Stored in an airtight container away from light, it will last forever, giving you a taste of civilization. The same goes for pure, unsweetened cocoa powder. It's just roasted, ground, and defatted cacao. No moisture, no fat to go rancid. It's stable and hard liquor. Vodka, whiskey, rum. The high alcohol content is a biocide. It's a disinfectant, a fuel, a currency, and a morale boost that will never, ever expire. We've built the pantry. Now we need the tools to maintain it, and they just so happen to be immortal themselves. The liquid guardians, acid and base. There are two more essentials that laugh at expiration dates. First, vinegar, the acid that never dies. White vinegar, apple cider vinegar, it doesn't matter. Acetic acid doesn't just preserve other foods, it is preservation. Its pH level is so low that bacteria take one look and file for unemployment. We're talking a pH of 2.4. That's acidic enough to strip rust. Use it for cleaning, for preserving your scavenged vegetables, or just to remind yourself what flavor used to be. And its chemical opposite, baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, the alkaline survivor. It doesn't just survive, it actively fights. It's a leavening agent, a cleaner, a fire extinguisher, a deodorizer, and an antacid for when your stomach finally rebels against your new diet. It is pure, stable chemistry in a box. 
And chemistry doesn't expire, it just waits. You now have the what, but the what not is just as important. Believing the wrong thing is a death sentence. Survival myths that will get you killed. Let's clear the air because what you think you know will get you killed. Myth 1. Brown rice is healthier so it's a better prep. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This is false. The oils that make it healthy are its downfall. They will go rancid and your entire 50 pound bag will be a useless, poisonous brick. Always choose white rice. Myth two, I can just freeze everything. Freezing is not preservation, it is a pause button. When the power goes out, that pause button is released. And all that moisture in your frozen meat, it's now a five star resort for bacteria. Freezing is a luxury of a working grid, not a survival strategy. Myth three, I'll just hunt and forage. This is the most dangerous myth. This is the fantasy of the unprepared. You think you're the only one with that idea? The forests will be picked clean of berries and edible plants in 48 hours. Every deer, every rabbit, every squirrel will be hunted by thousands of other desperate, armed, and untrained people. The woods will become a war zone. Hunting is not a plan. It's a lottery ticket. Real survival is boring. It's systematic. It's about storing calories when they are cheap and plentiful. Myth four, expiration dates are a government conspiracy. I can just ignore them. This is half right and dangerously wrong. Yes, the best buy date on a can of corn is a suggestion, but the use by date on a vacuum sealed meat product is a scientific reality. You must learn the science. You must trust the physics of preservation. Low moisture, no oxygen, high acid, high salt not the printed label. Your nose and your eyes are your new expiration dates. Do not get this wrong. Final word, stop hoarding, start curating. There you have it. This is not a pantry, this is a fortress. You're not just stockpiling food, you're stockpiling time. You are building a fortress against oblivion. One can, one grain, one crystal of salt at a time. The science is simple. You remove the water, you remove the oxygen, you remove all hope for microorganisms. What you're elected with is food that's more stubborn than you are, more persistent than cockroaches, and a hell of a lot more reliable than any government promise. You are not a hoarder. You are a curator. You are a librarian of calories. This isn't about hoping you'll survive. It's about having the scientific certainty that you will. Now go build your immortal pantry.